Hey everybody, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Now in the past I've done all kinds of lens comparisons, tests, shootouts, new versus vintage, and I'm going to do something a little bit different this time. I'm not going to tell you what I'm doing. I'm going to shoot a series of shots, the same setup, but we're going to change things around between each setup, and I'm not going to tell you exactly what I'm going to do. I want you to just take a look at the image, I'm going to talk to you for a few sentences, and you know, just look at the image and form a conclusion, good, bad, and different. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't. And maybe scribble a few notes. I'm going to probably label these or something so you can kind of keep track, and then we're going to compare them. And how this all plays out may come as a surprise, even to me. So let's go to the next setup. I hope you're watching this video in 4K because we're doing a bunch of different things with these shots and it's really important to be able to see the difference and I edited and mastered the whole thing in 4K. Well, 4K 2 to 1 because I kind of like that aspect ratio. So this is again yet another setup and hopefully you see some difference in here. So I'm going to do a little head turn. Hmm, something changed with this, I'm sure. I'm sure you saw this one and noticed it. Maybe I swapped lenses around. Um, new lens, vintage lens, cinema lens. Oh, what could I have changed here? And I'm just going to do a couple of these head turns again, just to look at, oh, my wonderful skin texture and pores. Good thing I'm not too self-conscious here. This one looks different too, and hopefully this is all coming across on YouTube or uh, Vim maybe I'll put this up on Vimeo, I don't know. Yet, yeah, what did I change on this shot? And the question is, how does it look? Yet another change. Might be a very subtle change, but yeah, I did make a change. Something really changed in this shot, but I'm not going to tell you quite yet. Well, all right, maybe I'll give you a little hint. Nah. Now what changed? Well, you might have a guess, but I'm not going to tell you. Now, does this look any different than the last shot? Six K sensor. Okay. Now I'm sure you noticed something changed with this and what could it be? Was it a lens change or something else? Okay, so I will tell you one thing. All the codecs that I'm shooting on are at least 10-bit. One more time, yet another look. And I will say that I'm recording at fairly high data rates with all these codecs, so the codecs can't really be picked on. Well, you can, but it's not exactly fair. They're not 25 megabits or something. So I had to reconfigure my setup a little bit, but this is a bonus lens that I'm throwing into the bunch. Hmm, not a bad look. Now, I'm not going to quite go through a few more variations with this lens because um, it only fits on one camera here. That'll give you a hint which uh, camera I'm shooting on and which lens. Ah, why not? Let's try one more thing here. Hmm. Okay, time for the big reveal. And I think that I need to be straight with you and say, I've been lying to you about a few things. 
I hadn't changed the lenses. Well, I did for the very last two shots, but all the rest use the exact same lens. Well, how did I change it? Well, I was using different filters in front of the lens. I was using a Schneider double black mist quarter, and I was using an old school 138 millimeter 2B black net. And that's one of my favorite filters for adding a little vintage look. But besides that, I also did another very sneaky thing. Um, I didn't again change lenses, I changed resolution. So did you necessarily pick out the shots that were in fact 1080 versus actual 4K? Yeah, it was kind of an interesting surprise to me to see that with a sharp lens and shooting 2K, it held up remarkably well in 4K. In fact, enough so that you could just sit there and say, well, I was shooting on this old lens, it's a little soft, and nobody would ever question it. To, it really brings to light the point of, do we really need more resolution? And did Ari, in picking 3.2K, kind of in the middle between 4K and 1080, pick a real sweet spot for great image quality and keeping file sizes under control and making data rates and everything else uh, much more manageable? So now that I've had a chance to look at this and really edit the footage, a couple of things, I guess, uh, were expected. The 2K footage held up surprisingly well. And the fact is, once you push this down into, say, a 1080 YouTube video, uh, good luck telling the two of them apart. I mean, obviously, that's probably kind of a given. But even at 4K, the differences, at least with the filtered images, were a lot more subtle. It was about micro texture. It wasn't about soft mush versus sharp. It was different levels of contrast and detail, still sharp. The one thing that kind of unpleasantly surprised me was the Fuji HLG 1080 shots. They looked like VHS, at least the filtered stuff did, and that really surprised me. So I need to go back and I need to do some more tests. And I want to see what the deal is because I've certainly shot plenty of 1080 material on that camera for broadcast and used one of the regular color profiles like Astia or Provia. And it's been great. It's been fine. It went right out to air. It was all great. So I'm not quite sure what I need to do with that or what I need to test to find out whether I possibly goofed a setting up, but I really don't think so, or whether that might just be a combination with that camera that just doesn't work well. So, of course, like anything else, you need to test your workflow and you need to test your post and if you can get it into a taste of what your distribution chain is like and how your images are going to go through that. Um, having an idea of what's going to happen to the images you create could save you a lot of time and trouble up front. For example, if you know that you need to shoot tens of hours of footage, shooting 1080 can make a lot of sense for storage, for convenience. You know, your cards last four times as long, drive space, the fact that you can edit it more easily on a laptop, probably pretty much seamlessly. 4K, you know, some laptops can do it, others kind of struggle with it. You know, you could make your life a lot simpler and easier if it works for your workflow, for your distribution, for your editing process. So test, test, test. So let me know what your thoughts are on this. Leave your comments down below, say hello, give me a thumbs up, watch the channel, subscribe. Thanks guys, and we'll see you soon.